Hey, B Third Men, Coach Field here, back for a new week. And this week, our focus is on being completely surrendered to God. So I'm going to start with a question What's holding you back? What is keeping you in your life from completely becoming an obedient servant to God who kind of has a total amount of freedom when it comes to how they live? because they're so locked in to what God desires, they're so in tune with the will of God that they just wake up every day and they love him and they serve their neighbor. That's that's the challenge that we're going to face this week. So when you think of being completely surrendered, what first comes to mind? When, when you think of even just surrender, is it a positive or a negative? I would venture to guess that for most of us, it's a kind of negative concept to, to have to surrender. As men growing up, maybe you played sports, maybe you served in the military, maybe you've always been a fan of uh, the army and, our, and, and the service that they provide us. And the last thing we would ever want them to do is surrender. If you watch the UFC, it's all about one man causing another man to surrender in the octagon. And that dates back all the way to the gladiators in Rome. We've always been fascinated and we've kind of always seen surrender in a negative light. But my challenge to you this week is to kind of flip the script. That's not the surrender we're talking about. We're talking about completely giving everything that we have to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ himself. And we're going to say, Lord, why would I even try to do things my way? When I can do things your way, and your way is the way, the truth, and the life. And so I want to draw on a few passages this week. First, um, you you would probably have already read it in our lesson. It's Deuteronomy 11.1. It says, Love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commands always. Emphasis on the always. Because here's what happens a lot in our modern Christianity. I call them cafeteria Christians. They run through a buffet line, through the scriptures, through the traditions of the church, throughout church history, and they go, hey, um, I like that one. I don't like that one. Ooh, that one's for me, but I don't want this or this. And I don't think that's the intention of God. I think he wants us to be completely surrendered to everything that he wants us to do. He wants us to live out our command, his commands. That's how we show that we love him. You know, we we love our neighbor because we will the good of them. But we can't will the good of God. And so we love God by obeying his commands. We learned that all the way back in our second purpose of our creation which is to love God. You know, we, we're going to follow his commands, but always. So which ones are you struggling with? Let's just start with that. You know, maybe it's something in your moral life. Maybe it's something you don't quite understand theologically. You can't really um, grasp. You don't have enough knowledge of it. And so you're not putting all of your faith into it. And you're you're kind of hesitant to surrender to that part of the scriptures. I'm going to beg you, don't do that. Sometimes we just have to have the faith like a child, like Jesus wants us to have, and we surrender to the desires he has for us. We follow the scriptural commands, and as we follow them and as we engage with the grace that he pours out on us, we grow in wisdom and we grow in understanding, and then it makes more sense. But I think the easier way to live is just surrender in the first place. So, Be the type of man that you're not going to be that cafeteria Christian. You want all of it because that's the type of men that we need. For far too long, we have people picking it apart, and it really doesn't work. All right, the second passage is this, Peter 1.14. He says, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. At this point, gentlemen, we're diving in enough to the scriptures Monday through Friday, and then you're going to church on Sundays. Like, you can't claim ignorance anymore. We're, we're living in the truth. We understand the word. We're growing to understand the word. And so 
let's don't be disobedient to it. It's going to make us uncomfortable because God wants to change our interior life. That's what it means to become a saint. That's what it means to, to grow in sanctity, to be sanctified, is we're going to change our in interior life. We're going to push out all the selfish desires that we have, and we're going to unite ourselves so fully to Jesus that we really and truly embrace the new creation that we are through him. Finally, in Matthew 16, 25, it says, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. It can be very challenging in this life. We want to earn things in this world. We want to grow in popularity. We want to become famous. We want to become rich. And it's hard. And it's not to say that God does not desire us to have nice things. But we can't make those the priority. We have to make the priority being completely surrendered to God. Let me close with this, a little bit of advice. You know, we're, we're 2,000 years into church history, and there's a, lot of the, the, sorry, there's a lot of theologians from Paul, St. Paul being the first one, to now. We've had a lot of commentary on Scripture. Obviously, St. Paul is a very unique theologian because he had a certain level of divine revelation directly from Jesus, and he wrote a big portion of the New Testament. Um, but over the years, we've had this commentary, and, and we do have to put some trust in people to help teach us the scriptures, you know, how to live this out. What does it look like? But if you're struggling with something, let me give you something that's helped me in my life. I like to go back to the early church. I like to fall back on the first 500 years of church history. And if you've never read the Patristic Fathers, I encourage you to do that. Over the course of this week, I might drop some little notes here and there on some of the topics that we've already studied. But it's real interesting to find out, what did Ignatius teach? Ignatius was a direct disciple of John of the Cross. You know, one generation removed from Jesus, what were the early Christians doing? Because I think we want to strive to mirror that, especially if we're getting distracted in this modern world of a lot of people telling us, well, that's kind of like old school Christianity. That doesn't really pertain to us anymore. And we know, men, that's not true. You know, the gospel was true the day that it was written. The scriptures were true the day that they were passed down from the Holy Spirit. And, and the, uh, the writers, the biblical writers wrote them down, and they're true today. And so, let it shape your life. Completely surrender yourself to Jesus. Completely surrender yourself to the Word of God. And when you feel a little bit confused, live it out and let's see what happens. Because I guarantee you, if you will completely surrender every day through the Word, your life will be freer than you could ever imagine it to be. It's going to be a great week studying the Word of God with you. Uh, if you have questions, please jump in our Locals platform and let's grow together. Thanks. God bless.